I've got $100,000 US cash right here. This is the amount of money I seek to make on every single family home that I buy. I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna hold it for five years, I'm gonna rent it in that period of time, I'm gonna literally make tax-free money on it, and when you look at this amount of money, it's like, geez, Chris, you've done over 6,000 deals between you and in your investors, over $2 billion worth. How do you find really good deals? And that, my friend, is the million dollar question. And today I'm gonna to answer it. Today I'm gonna to share with you the five secrets of how I find the very best deals. So check it out. If you wanna know how to do deals that make this, you need to be doing something right here. Literally, there are five steps to how I find really amazing deals. And I am talking about a software, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna make it available to you for free. But first, before I can set you loose on that software, there are five things that I wanna teach you because I want you to understand that I don't just make piles of money from just picking any random home. In fact, one of my biggest pet peeves, sometimes I'll meet a, a brand new investor, they have like three or four or five doors and they're like, oh yeah, I, I own real estate, so I'm an investor. And I'm like, uh, are they good deals? Do they have positive cash flow? Are they making you money? And sometimes they look at me blank stare and they're like, no, that's weird you say that. I'm like losing money, it's not even working. And I'm like, yeah, um, owning a home and being a real estate investor are not the same thing. Let's help you follow the following five steps to do it the right way. Finding the perfect deal. 90% of all millionaires own real estate investments, and yet the 2008 crash attests to the risk involved in buying the properties at the wrong time for the wrong price. How can anyone tell what makes a real estate deal good versus a deal bad? Because there's a ton of people that in 2005, six and seven were chasing the market. It was going up, 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 up. And then when the market burst in 2008, that happened in October, all of a sudden everyone couldn't afford their payments and all of a sudden they lost their homes. They went back to the bank. We had the largest glut of foreclosures that we've seen for decades. And yet 2008 was when I started buying thousands of homes. It's when I started winning and crushing it. So step number one, this is bonus material. I want you to understand that timing does not affect your ability to become a multimillionaire in the game of real estate. Having the right strategy does. And the five following steps that I'm gonna teach you will make sure that you nail that strategy and that you get it right. The very first step already is not gonna make me super popular, but I promise you it is literally the secret behind how much winning I'm doing right now. And here it is, it's finding the right market. Ah, oh, Chris, are you telling me that I can't buy real estate in my backyard where I live? Well, of course you can. But remember, I'm not here to show you how to buy real estate. I'm here to show you how to become a successful investor that makes the most money. So stay open-minded because at the end, I'm gonna show you how simple and easy this can be, even if the right market is not where you live. The right location is everything in the game of real estate. It influences rent potential, resale value, the type of tenants you attract, and even the kind of financing that you can qualify for. Do your research, check out the schools, the local shopping, and the comparables of local properties just to make sure you're in the right space. And as a bonus, I'm just gonna tell you right now that nationwide there are 324 markets, but I choose to only invest in the top five at any given time. That means that right now I'm heavy in certain areas of Florida, Memphis, Tennessee, I'm in Ohio, I'm in Alabama. In these states, I am crushing it and my ROIs are higher than normal. Why? Well, I'm actually buying far below the median, I'm getting higher rents, and I'm gonna explain all of this to you because that software I'm gonna set you loose on, well, you could use it to find a good deal anywhere, but I also want you to understand that there are areas that are better than others, and because at this point, Let's be honest, I'm at the top of my game transacting to date over 6,000 deals. So I'm a little bit of a brat. I want the best of the best of the best of the best when it comes to markets. For you, there will be a little bit more flexibility. Step two, we're gonna talk about this stuff right here. You're looking at what I call cash flow. The money that's left over after you've paid all your expenses. Before you buy the house, you should actually have an understanding of what the positive cash flow is going to be. Now that you have found the location, research cash flow potential. What do similar properties nearby rent for? Is that revenue enough to make investing worth it? For example, I bought this house, I'm renting it for $1,500 a month. My mortgage and all expenses are $1,000 a month. So every month I bring in $1,500, 1,000 goes out the door, what's left over? One two, 
three, four, five hundred dollars. You're going to find that there are some properties with the software that I'm about to show you where your cash flow is going to be break even. Would I buy a piece of real estate to take in all the rent, pay all my expenses to be left with nothing at the end of the month? No, that is really stupid. You should never do that. And anyone that's telling you that you should do that is a fool because your positive cash flow is actually not what will make you that $100,000 stack. It's not what makes you rich, but it is what maintains the property. And I'll tell you what, averaging $500 of cash flow on my first 25 homes meant that I had $12,000 left over on average every month. And that was enough to get me out of my job. So cash flow, it matters. So check it out. Step one, you've selected your market. Step two, we're looking at specific criteria. So in this area, you find out, hey, Chris, as long as I stick with a three bedroom, two bath, I'm going to find that $500 cash flow sweet spot. But if I move up to like a five bedroom, four bath, I find that I actually go negative $300 a month. Well, now that I'm clear, I can tell the software, find me my match. Now that you know your break even point, look at as many deals as possible through the system. Use software to help identify those properties that match your specific criteria and identify the best opportunities in your market. I'm going to share with you some of my secret criteria right now. I like buying things below the median. National median is currently set to $400,000. Honestly, should be closer to $290,000, $310,000. So I go into markets where I can buy 20 to 30% below what the number should be, which means every market that I'm buying real estate in, my average purchase price is under $250,000. Now, the first reason why I do this, and you may want to take notes, is that if the market goes up, what goes up also has to come down. And if you start at real estate that is way over the median, those are the first prices to literally come cannonballing down. But when you buy 20 or 30% below the median and the market adjusts, it feels like a little bit of a speed bump, okay? Here's another piece of criteria. I love buying three to four bedroom homes, two to three bathrooms. I like buying those homes that are preferably maybe 30 years old, but fully refurbished or newer, like as in the last 10 or 15 years old. What that criteria does is if I can have a positive cash flow on entry level real estate below 20, 30% what the median should be, that's a sweet spot where all of a sudden hold that home long enough, hold it the right way, $100,000 of profits becomes a possibility. Okay, Chris, number four better be good. I mean, at the end of the day, you are talking about the possibility of 50, 70, 80, or even $100,000 of profit on a house. Like there's gotta be something else to your secret sauce and that software of yours. Like what else are you doing? And it looks like this one. I am buying on market MLS and off market non MLS deals which means that if I'm gonna find a deal that's not on the MLS, I have to find a way, if the software found it for me, I gotta have a way to reach out to the owner. And there's only one problem. The deal literally isn't on the market, so I may not even be able to find the owner's contact information, and yet, that's the deal that has a lot more lettuce and cheddar in it. Once you've found the right property, you're ready to contact the owner. For properties that are off market, owner information can prove more difficult to find. Use skip tracing software to access phone numbers and emails to be able to find the best deals that aren't available on the MLS. And the software that I'm gonna be giving you free access to, guess what it does? It does that skip tracing. So when I find a bunch of really good deals that are not on the market that I can get potentially really far below market, I have to have a way to text or phone call or email that person, and I've got a built-in model that will help you do just that. Now, in a moment, I'm gonna give you a brief tutorial to that software, but first, I wanna share with you the fifth and final thing, which is, hey, Chris, I found a really good deal. How do I buy it? Like, probably take some money. I'm like, yes, and there are three different approaches that you can take, and no, they don't all require your money. Here's number one. Budget, do it the hard way, like save up your pennies and then eventually you'll have enough money for a down payment. People house hack all the time on a primary residence with a 3% down payment where you can get away with 10 or $15,000 max out of pocket. Or if you're gonna buy it as an investment property because you're not gonna occupy it. It is a non-owner occupied property. It's a true investment property. Banks will lend you up to 80% of the money, but Chris, that means that I gotta have the other 20%. And on a $220,000 house, I could still be $40,000, $50,000. Like, how do I come up with that? Here's the third one. Ta-da, ta-da, investors. OPM, other people's money. If it's a good deal, the money's out there. You just gotta open your yapper. If you find a great deal, family and friends may also invest in your opportunity 
if you are willing to share some of the profits with them. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, I do all of these methods right here and they're all valid. And it means that at the end of the day, the amount of green that you own doesn't determine your possibilities in life. It's your creativity that does. Now hold your horses in a moment. I'm gonna demo the software. I'm gonna show you how to access it and how I actually use it. But first I wanna share number five with you, which is where do you get the money from to buy the real estate? All right, check it out. I am showing you my software called Chris Crone House Finder. And you know what we're gonna do right now? I'm gonna take you to one of my hot markets and we're gonna see if we can find just one really good deal right now. Um, I got the map right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in on Arkansas, specifically an area called Bentonville. This is one of the top five markets that I invest in. I'm gonna grab my marker right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna outline big part of the city and we're gonna do a search here and say, all right, do we have some houses? Yes, we have some houses for sale in that area. And now I'm gonna to go to the filter and I'm gonna say, well, let's filter this down. First of all, let's look at on and off market deals. So I'm definitely gonna click my on. And then um, I'm also going to need to put some information here about the listing amount. So for example, I'm gonna look at everything between $150,000, but no more than $250,000. Similarly, I'm gonna to go to valuation and I'm gonna tell them I need something that is at least worth 250,000 that might even be worth $400,000. And uh, we do that search and what we've got is, uh, we got a winner, we got a house right here in Springdale. Let's check this out. All right, check it out. The price here is it's listed for $235,000. Based on comps, it's estimated value currently $264,000, bingo. This house is currently $30,000 priced below the market. And this is one that I could go to and guess what I could do? I could actually offer something lower. I might step into 40 or $50,000 worth of equity. And that's before I start cash flowing, making money on it. And I wanted to, I want to remind you of something. You saw me literally do this in like 60 seconds. When I say I want to make $100,000 on a deal, yes, a part of that is cash flow tax-free because of the depreciation. Yes, some of that is the appreciation and the growth, but some of that is just walking into some smart equity, getting it below market. And what I just showed you is just one way. I could have looked at tax deeds. I could have looked at people that are defaulting on their taxes. I could have looked at foreclosures. I could have looked at a ton more off-market deals. The point is that I wanted to find a house in this area and I found one. And friends, that's how simple this system actually works. You only need one deal to make your next 100K and you only need nine more like it to become a millionaire. And you know what, I liked it so much, I did it hundreds of times, then I've done it thousands of times, and I'm telling you, it's now a system and it keeps on multiplying. And the secret to all that success for me really comes down to finding really good deals. Now, if you click the link below, you can get a free trial for Chris Crone House Finder and literally take just five, 10 minutes, use some of my preset configurations and walk into finding really good deals near you right now. Literally do it right now. Click the link, get your free version of it for the next several days. It'll allow you to play with the system and literally start finding really good deals. Click the link, I'll see you there. Today I gave you five secrets on how I find really good deals and it only feels fair if I follow it up with a warning so you don't become one of those investors that just screws the pooch and fails. In this next video, I'm gonna share with you the number one reason why investors fail. Watch the video, commit not to make that one mistake and you'll be on your way to successful investing.